Hello everyone, welcome to today's video on eigen decomposition. So in this video, we are going to clarify all the concepts about eigen decomposition, eigen value, eigen vector, and also the geometrical interpretation of the eigen decomposition. Also, there are a few things that you need to know in order to understand eigen decomposition properly. So I'm going to cover those as well. So let's dive in. The first thing is the symmetric matrix. So what's a symmetric matrix? So this matrix, as you can tell, here all the elements a i j is equal to a j i. So what do I mean by that? For example, the element that is 1 in row 2 and column 1 is the same as this element, which is situated in the row 1 and column 2. Similarly, the element of row 3 and column 1 is the same as the element of row 1 and column 3. So this can be seen in every combination of rows and columns. Now if you transpose this matrix, for example, you can see that A transpose is actually equal to A. So what is matrix transposition? If you make each row of this matrix into the column of this matrix, then this new matrix is going to be called the transposition of the original matrix A. Right? For example, 4 over minus 2 is now the column of AT. 1, 3, 0 is the column of AT. But it did not make any difference because the matrices are equal. And this is the property of symmetric matrix. Now, I mean, most matrices are not really symmetric. For example, this matrix right here, if you actually transpose it, for example, making 0, 2, minus 1 as the first column right here, 1, 3, 4 as the second column. So this is not going to be equal to the original BT, original B. Okay. So that is symmetric matrix. Now, there is one other thing that I think you already understand that unless the matrices are square matrices, it is not possible to be symmetric. So what's a square matrix? Square matrix is something which has equal number of rows and columns. For example, here there are three rows and three columns. So next thing we need to know is the orthogonal matrix. So orthogonal matrices look like this. So what is this? Let me clarify this. So if you take the transposition of Q, QT, and multiply it by Q, you are going to end up with an identity matrix I. That means the diagonal elements is, are going to be 1 and all other elements are going to be 0, right? Now, it has some implications here. For example, I mean, QT, Q, Q, QT, everything is equal to I. Now, I think something is ringing a bell in your head. For example, if we actually multiply a matrix by its inverse, only then we are supposed to get I, the identity matrix, right? That means, Q inverse 1 or the inversion or the inverse matrix of Q is the same as the transposition of Q. So that is the property of orthogonal matrix. But I mean, this is just a definition, but I think we need to learn about this in more depth. For example, each row vector, each row, I mean, you can think of these rows as vectors. For example, this is one row vector, the second row is also another vector and so on and so forth. So each row vector is actually orthogonal or perpendicular to all other rows. So how do we know that? If you do a dot product between this vector and this vector, you are going to get zero. That means their angle, the angle between them is actually 90 degree. You can try out all the combinations of two rows and you can even do it for columns. You can take this column and multiply it by this column. I mean the dot product, you are going to get zero. So each row vector is perpendicular to all other rows and each column vector is also perpendicular to all other columns. So you can see this visually as well. For example, we have a vector AX and we have a vector Y. If we multiply these two vectors, then we are going to get zero. And that is why they are perpendicular. So this is called orthogonal matrix and this is going to be important for the eigen decomposition. So one thing I want to mention in advance is unless your matrix is symmetric, you cannot do eigen decomposition on that matrix. That is number one. And number two is when you decompose your original matrix, the symmetric matrix, you are going to get some matrices which are going to be orthogonal. We are going to see that in the next few slides gradually. So first of all, let's understand what is eigenvalue and eigenvector before doing the math, right? So this is, I think, the most important equation for eigenvalue and eigenvector. So this is a symmetric matrix A, as we mentioned before. This phi is an eigenvector. This lambda is an eigenvalue. This is a value, by the way, a scalar value, like 2, 3, 5, etc. And this is the same eigenvector. So what is this equation actually representing? Let's actually understand this pictorially. Suppose this 1, 1, 2 size, this is a vector V. 
this is the vector v, this is x-axis, this is y-axis, and we can clearly see the direction of this vector right here. Now, if we multiply this vector v by this matrix, say a, this is a, this is a symmetric matrix, by the way, as you can see. If we multiply it by this matrix, what are we going to get? The matrix will actually be stretched three times in the same direction. That means the value of lambda is going to be three, right? So if the value of lambda would be 0 0.1, then there will be a compression, right? The vector would be compressed rather than being stretched. Now you may be wondering that maybe if we multiply a vector v by a symmetric matrix, it is always going to be stretched or compressed. No, it is not going to happen. It is going to happen in very, very few cases. For example, this is one of those cases. So these cases are actually called eigenvectors. So this one one, this is an eigenvector of this matrix one of the eigenvectors. I mean, there can be multiple eigenvectors as well. So this is one of the eigenvectors of this matrix and the eigenvalue, the eigenvalue is three because the stretch is being three, three times, right? So this is actually the significance of eigenvalue and eigenvector. Now let's see an example where this kind of stretching in the same direction doesn't happen, which is actually most of the case. For example, if you take a vector one zero, and multiply by this matrix, it is going to actually shift from its original direction to somewhere else, right? So it's not an eigenvector of this matrix. That is the thing. Okay, a few other things. If your symmetric matrix shape is n into n, say n equal to 5, if it is 5 into 5, then there can be maximum 5 eigenvector and value pairs. Now, I'm saying maximum because there can be less than five as well. Now some, I mean, some n into n matrices may have less than n eigenvectors. So the question is what happens to those eigenvalues? Those eigenvalues will be zero. So for example, if you have a five into five symmetric matrix and you are doing eigen decomposition, maybe you can get only two, only two non-zero positive eigenvalues and the other three are actually zero. So in that case, that matrix only has two eigenvectors and corresponding two eigenvalues. Okay, that is the thing. Obviously, right now, the question that is coming to your mind is how exactly are we going to get this eigenvector and this eigenvalue, right? Which is a very good question and I think natural question to appear in your mind. So for that to actually calculate, we need to understand the eigenvector characteristic equation. This is the start. I mean, we talked about this before. We can simply switch side and we can take P as the common factor. Now here you can see that either this portion needs to be zero or V needs to be zero. Now V is not zero because it's a non-zero eigenvector. It's supposed to be. That means this left part is zero. I mean, when do we call a matrix zero? I mean, we call it when the determinant of the matrix is zero. So when the determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to zero, then we can say that the right-hand side can be zero. Now, this is basically the characteristic equation. So, I mean, remember the last two equations very clearly, which is A minus lambda I, dot v and determinant of a minus lambda I equal to zero. So these two equations are the ones we are going to use to calculate our Aiken vector and Aiken value pair. So now I'm going to show you an example of how we are going to extract the Aiken vector and Aiken values from a symmetric matrix. So this is the symmetric matrix that we are talking about. So we know this equation from the previous slide. I mean, if we plug in the values, we are going to get something like this. We can solve it and get the values of lambda. So these two are the eigenvalues. Now remember that this is the first eigenvalue. Lambda 2 is the first eigenvalue and lambda 1 is the second eigenvalue. Always remember that the highest eigenvalue will be the first one and the lower ones will come at second, third, fourth. So it's a decreasing order arranging. Okay, that is the thing. Now we have lambda, but we need to know the V, right? We need to know the eigenvectors. We only know the eigenvalues right now. This equation you already remember from the previous slide, which was A minus lambda I dot V equal to zero. So lambda equal to three. So let's first assume that lambda two equal to three. So we put three here. So if we do that, then this kind of thing appears and we can write Y equal to X. So now we have Y equal to X. So what are going to be the value of X and Y for V1, right? For the first eigenvector, the top eigenvector. So V1 is equal to 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. Now we could have written 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. But we cannot do that. We won't do that because we want to make sure that this vector is a unit vector because the eigenvector is only direction. It should be a unit vector. So unit vector is those vectors where the L2 norm or the squared sum is 1. So if you take square and sum these things up, there's going to be 1. That's why. So this is for 3. Now let's look at the second eigenvalue. 
So you can see that if we do the same thing here, we are going to get y equal to minus x and we can plug those values in and turn this into a unit vector again. So now we have our two eigenvectors and our two eigenvalues. Now a few other things that we really want to mention here is the eigenvectors are always orthogonal to each other. You can see you can multiply. You can do the dot product between v1 and v2 and you are going to get zero. That is why they are orthogonal to each other. Now the eigenvector with the max eigenvalue, which is three in this case, is the PC1, the principal component one. And the second max is the principal component axis two. Now, if you know about PCA or principal component analysis from before, then you are familiar with this. So you can get your PC1, PC2, PC3 in this way. But if you are not familiar with this, then that's okay. I'm going to make a separate video on the principal components because I think PCA or principal component analysis is one of the most important topics in bioinformatics, genomics or in any other field. So I will make a separate video on that with its applications as well. So, I mean, you can watch that video later on. But okay, let's move on now. So we can arrange those v1 and v2 into a nice matrix Q. Now Q is, an, is going to be orthogonal. You can test it out. All the rows, I mean, you, if you multiply your dot product, the rows, it will be zero. You can try the columns as well. They will also be zero when you do the dot product. So there are two other things that you need to remember here. This kind of orthogonal matrices, if you multiply, if you multiply some vector or some object with this kind of orthogonal matrix, you are actually going to perform a rotation. So it's so these kind of orthogonal matrices are called rotation matrix. Now, since they are orthogonal, they also form their own coordinate system. Now, if you are not understanding what I'm saying, let me clarify this. So suppose you have this nice circle object here in a 2D space. So if you multiply each point vector by this nice orthogonal matrix, you are going to see this kind of rotation shift. So it will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. And you are going to see this shift. That's why I'm saying that when you multiply by this matrix, it's going to be a rotation. So similarly, if you actually put these V1 and V2 that we are seeing here on, an, on a 2D coordinate system, you are going to see these two vectors, which is the X prime vector and Y prime vector. Now these two are orthogonal to each other. Understand that your original axis, which is X and Y, they are also perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. In the same fashion, you are now seeing X prime and Y prime being orthogonal to each other. That means it's sort of giving you a whole new, a brand new coordinate system that you can follow for your data points. So that is something you can keep in mind as well. And again, I mean, this is where the PCA comes from, the principal components come from, which I will discuss a separate video. Okay, so now let's try to actually derive or understand the eigen decomposition equation because ultimately our target was that we have a symmetric matrix and we want to do eigen decomposition on that matrix so how can we actually achieve it so first of all let's say that we have a matrix a, a symmetric matrix a which is of shape n into n and we can get these n eigen vector eigen value pairs so the last few of them can be zero as well so we are not going to make these assumptions here we are just being very generic right here we can arrange all these v1 eigen vectors, v1, v2, vn eigen vectors as the columns of the Q matrix, which is going to be an orthogonal matrix. And we can arrange all the eigen values in the diagonals of a eigen value matrix. So in the eigen value matrix, except for the diagonal elements, everything else will be zero. Okay. So this is very important. Lambda one will be the highest value. Lambda 2 will be the next highest. Lambda 3 will be the next highest and so on and so forth. So you need to arrange your Q and your eigenvalue uh, matrix such that the topmost eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector is actually coming first. And then the next one is coming second and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is one concept. So now what are we going to do with these things? So again, this is the equation. I mean, we have brought up many, many times already. I've written N here because now there are multiple Vs. So just to clarify that maybe it can be any V. Now, obviously we actually made this nice Q matrix using those Vs. So we can actually write something like this. Now, obviously there is some swapping here because of dimension matching and other things. Then we can actually multiply by Q2 at both sides. If we do this, then what will happen? We know that Q is an orthogonal matrix. Since Q is an orthogonal matrix, we know that QQT is actually equal to I, identity matrix. And if you multiply any matrix by I matrix or identity, then you are going to get back exactly that matrix, right? The A matrix. So this is basically the eigen decomposition equation. A equal to Q, eigen value, eigen value matrix, let's call it sigma and QT. 
Okay. And we already saw how we are going to derive these things because we know how to get the lambdas and the v's from the previous solution, from the previous example. Okay. So now that we know how to decompose a symmetric matrix using eigen decomposition rule, let's see what is the physical interpretation of this. So this is the thing that we saw before. I mean, this is the eigen decomposition equation. Suppose this is again the object that we have. If we multiply the point vectors of this object by A, then we are going to get something like this, which is, I mean, suppose A has something in it. I mean, I'm not writing precisely what A is, but if we multiply it by A, maybe we are going to see something like this. So this is some sort of rotation right here. So it's rotating and it's stretching and it's becoming an ellipse, right? Now, can we actually achieve the same level of distortion using these three multiplications? So let's multiply by, multiply first by QT because this is the rightmost one because the object will be here, right? The object will be here. So multiplication by QT will be first. So suppose after multiplying by QT, there is a, there is a clockwise rotation and we can see the rotation right here. Then if we multiply by uh, the sigma, we can see that there is some stretching in the x-axis and some compression in the y-axis. Now, I'm actually showing you a matrix here because I never really showed you th this before. So you can see that 3 is the first eigenvalue, the topmost eigenvalue, and point 0.2 is the second most, second highest eigenvalue. So 3 is bigger than 1, so there is a stretching right here in the x-axis, and point 0.2 is smaller than 1, so there is a compression. And finally, if you apply the Q, the final Q, you can have, what should I say, anti-clockwise rotation effect, and then you are going to get back the final, the final shape, right? So this is the significance of actually decomposing a symmetric matrix A through eigen decomposition. So hopefully you like the video. If you like the video, feel free to subscribe and share, and we have a donation link here in the description. Feel free to donate to our channel to support us. Thanks very much.